Welcome to this video on Raw Panel. I'm really excited to introduce you guys to what Raw Panel is, how it works, and how you can integrate with it. I'm assuming that you are probably a, um, a third party partner, someone who wants to integrate Skyhoy products in your uh, hardware or software applications, and we have a really wonderful API or protocol for that. That's what we call Raw Panel. And the first thing I want to do is to take you through a bunch of slides here that will uh, explain the basics of that. You may have already received a little uh, brochure on the same things. But basically, Raw Panel is your parameter values, your encoder knobs, your colors, your images, your text, your button presses. It's all you on the panel. So um, that that's what we give you. The alternative is that our panels integrate directly the protocol of external devices. But in this case, we're turning it around. So our panels become like dumb panels. And all you care for is to have an easy to use protocol to and efficient protocol to, to work with these uh, panels. So that's what we're giving you. It is like all Skyhoy panels supported. It's easy to get started. It's network based. So it, the panels are a TCP server. It is event based triggers. You can send feedback to the LEDs and the displays on the panels. You have the possibility of ASCII or binary encoding the messages. We have a self-describing topology that's extremely powerful. And that, that allows you to, to in integrate any raw panel compliant device without knowing what it is. If you uh, follow that uh, way of integration, we can um, discover the panels on network. And we have an emulator that will help you to get started right away without even having hardware. To, uh, to work with. And then, of course, we have some various tools that will help to get all this done. So first of all, what are the Skyhoy product portfolio? This is probably pretty much it. You see, we have a ton of uh, PDC controllers up here. We have a lot for vision mixing, uh, for, for mega panel sizes and small controllers like the Minifly here. So every kind of form factor you could imagine for, for vision mixing and uh, stuff <laughs> is in here. We have control panels for RCP control, camera control, shading, and so on. We have uh, audio um, consoles. And notice how these form factors all fit together. So our vision is really to integrate control of many different things, like in the same context. And having uh, these modules become like one coherent panel. And that is, uh, in, in one way achieved by having a form factor that really fits and clicks well together here. And then we have a ton of rec um, units, like one rack unit, two rack unit panels with buttons and knobs and color displays and monochrome displays and, and so on. So that's basically the portfolio. But the interesting thing is that uh, you can basically choose um, any of these. And if you inserted your product here, <laughs> then that would be able over network to integrate with all the different form factors of Skyhoy panels that you can find in that portfolio. Portfolio. One aspect is also that you can integrate third party panels. So as a new thing, we have um, we have made ways to to take like a blue pill like this one and then uh, connect a stream deck device like this one to the blue pill and then make it available over network. So you can also integrate that. Of course, you need to have the blue pill. You also need a license for the uh, software that integrates with the Stream Deck. But it can be done more or less like you see right here. You can even use a USB hub to have multiple devices connected in this way. XKeys is another example of a uh, external product that can be integrated in ways like these. And uh, it's basically, this list is probably going to grow. Because our vision is that um, to, to invent the future of media production control. And a part of that future is not only Sky products. It's probably a, a mix of many different things that you want to integrate in this way. And raw panel is a central way to do that. So as soon as you have this raw panel protocol or a device on your network, like uh, today we'll be um, uh, looking at a Rack Fusion Live here. And when that is on your network, you can simply connect to it. On a Mac, you uh, will find the NC uh, application. On a PC, it's a PuTTY. And uh, you use that to connect over TCP. And then you have text messages you can just write over to it. Event-based triggers. Well, as you are pulling the T-bar on something, you get these events out. Uh, if you're turning a knob, you get these events out. And we'll look at some of that later. Then you can also send feedback back to the buttons and so on. Uh, there are two ways. You have a very simple ASCII-based way of doing it. But sometimes the values is a little bit cryptic, and you need to do some binary math. Alternatively, you can uh, often specify a JSON string that is more descriptive of what you're doing. And that depends a little bit on the panel, because it won't work on Unisketch panels, but it will work on modern blue pill based uh, panels. So uh, some of the protocol features are only supported by some devices. And uh, then we can also send over text, various ways of doing that. But as I mentioned, there is uh, ASCII and binary encoding forms. And that means, uh, as an example, the 
version one of the protocol has this very simple text-based approach to letting you uh, set colors and read button presses and so on. Uh, as soon as we get to setting text on it, then you begin to see that the delimiter being a vertical pipe becomes a little bit funky way of doing it, while the JSON is likely to be a more structured approach where you can uh, easily identify what is the title, what is text line one, what is text line two, and is pair mode set, and, and so on. And obviously, the binary protocol is only for binary compliant devices like computers to read. But that's also a way you can do it. The, the devices would pop up on, um, on Discovery. And uh, then there's the self-describing topology, which means that a panel like this one can be fully drawn by the information you get from the panel. So there's the JSON part of that, and that JSON part is, is like an index of all the hardware components, their numbers, their types, how to render them with a specification of symbol uh, rectangles and circles and some styling information. Also, what is the pixel dimensions of a display, for instance? This is what you see right here. Uh, this is the four-way button. So B4 means four-way button. It has output capability of uh, red, green, and blue. And uh, it is uh, it has these dimensions in tenths of millimeters. And it is, uh, let me see. Yeah, it's just examples of what I could read from the topology in the background here. And then over here, it's like the um, background image of the whole thing is like an SVG that uh, you can style as fancy as you want. Like we have made a beautiful blue gradient here to really mimic the view or the, the way our controllers look. So self-describing topology is really awesome. And then now we come to the emulator, which is even more awesome because in the emulator, you can actually take, you, you can, you can emulate the physical panel. So imagine you have this inline 22. This is what this panel is called. And that this is the real panel, but inside the emulator, you get exactly uh, that, that same panel uh, in a web browser. And you can, uh, instead of turning the knob in the real world, you can click uh, small handles, and then it will correspond to turning it in the real world. So this is how you would get started with like the 40 plus models that we have. You would be able to emulate these inside the emulator instead of getting the hardware on your desk. And then finally, we have this um, Raw Panel Explorer, which is very helpful to um, have you get started and explore the various commands. So um, it would be easy for you to experiment your way into working with the Raw Panel protocol. I love that approach because that makes you productive super fast. Um, you kind of nail down concepts uh, quickly, and you can quickly progress, move on, and, and you know get to the next things. OK, so. Um, basically, there's a few things that we need to download here from our GitHub repository. First of all, I would um, invite you to visit our support part. Go into, I think, manuals uh, under Skahoy. You'll find, let me see, the um, raw panel v2. So that PDF file is your go-to place in terms of how, how is the raw panel uh, protocol uh, working and reading about it and so on. So this is the, the ultimate reference, OK? But another repository was really important today, and that is the one called Raw Panel Explorer, this guy. Okay, and this is actually open source. We have put it out under, I think, MIT license. So you have a Go code in here you can use to see how to connect and so on. So much of this is available for you. But today we'll just download releases. So if you go into releases and we are on a Mac, oh, is it an ARM? Probably. Okay, let's download this guy. OK, so I just got this one downloaded. And uh, let me, um, OK, so let's just open Finder and go to Downloads here. Then if I, I think I, there's a little dance that you need to do every time you download these Mac applications. Uh, so if you go to Wiki and uh, Innovation Lab applications, then we have a little description of what do you do on Mac and Windows if you want to run these uh, CLI uh, applications. and there's, some some tricks to getting that done. You need to modify the permissions. So I need to chmod plus x for execute uh, raw panel explorer. Let me see. We have it uh, right here. Yes. So I want to do that. And then I want to run it. And that looks great. Now it's going to do, you know, ask me, oh, um, you know, this is a potentially malicious software. Well, I know it's not. So I will go in here under security and privacy, quickly tell it, yes, thank you. I want to allow it anyway. 
I want to then run it once again. It will ask me in a different way now, and I will still <laughs> answer open. And then finally, I managed to open this one. So I actually did this, this whole dance um, just right there. And you can see that it is uh, finding a few panels on the network. So this application is going to scan your network for raw panel devices. And uh, did it find this one? Actually, it did. This is this is the panel that you see right here, but it is not allowing me to connect. And the reason why it's not doing that is because this panel is currently actually being, um, uh, it, it's dedicated to internal usage. So it is using raw panel, but it's running it from the internal reactor application. And that is the other side of the fence. Reactor is our panel management software that connects to our panels using raw panel protocol. But that is supposed to keep the panels for itself. So uh, we are not sharing our panels with, with that approach. So this is the um, uh, internals of our um, uh, Rack Fusion Live. Uh, what I will go and do straight away is to find the hardware manager. So this is also the instructions to you. If you have a blue pill inside device like this Rack Fusion Live, having the blue pill brain inside of it, you need to um, probably, you don't need to disable reactor, but you need to go and listen on port and probably disable listen on socket. Listen on socket means the internal communication to reactor. Listen on port means that it's now opening up to networks outside of us. Notice that you can lock to IPs, you can set a number of max clients and so on. You also have something called protocol mode where you can set whether it's uh, automatically detecting or binary or ASCII. Uh, usually we just run auto because that is the most flexible for most of us. And save and restart. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so as we've just done this, then if you go here, you can see now we can actually connect to the panel. So you see the panel here is uh, kind of ready. It says uh, it is uh, sleepy and it is doing so, some routine there, but now you can see it's waiting for raw panel. So it's actually waiting for connection. If I press that button, you see it's connected to the panel. If I press this button on the panel or this one, you see triggers is coming into the raw panel. Uh, Explorer application. I could uh, press this one to go through full uh, throttle. It means that everything is going to light up and uh, I can just clear it all again. I can also send stuff back from this application. So this is a quick demo that I can turn on this button. I can make it dimmed. I can make it fully lit dimmed and then I can turn it off. I can also make it red. I can make it green. Um, okay, something is wrong with this panel. Never mind, it's blue. And um, and I can also choose a color like uh, this is supposed to be yellow, but I know there's a hardware profile on this <laughs> old prototype that is just reversing uh, green and blue. So uh, it was actually a bad choice for this demo, but fun anyway, right? So um, this, this is the way you can explore all these things. And you see down here, every time you click any of these colors, notice how these are changing. So they're actually helping you to say, hey, uh, I want to light this button up. So uh, I just pick the button and I turn it on and I give it a color and then, okay, what did you send to make that happen? And you see all that down here. You can even press this one called full state because that will kind of summarize all the, the three individual commands that I've just sent to the panel is now gonna be summarized to this, including apparently the text command, which is the text for the display that doesn't exist on this button. But anyway, you see, this is what the essence of the raw panel protocol. But you would connect in, in other ways, right? So let's just open a new terminal here and then say uh, NC for Netcat. And then I would just uh, type in the IP address of it. And then port um, 9923 is the standard port that we're using. So uh, we are actually now connected to the panel. Uh, there's this little thing that you need to observe. And you're actually seeing it right now because it's still in auto mode. And as long as the panel doesn't know how you as a client are going to talk to it, it's going to assume you're binary. And this is why you can get garbage like this. So even if I press the button, you see a lot of garbage arriving to the client here. But if you type in such as list, enter, then you're basically telling the panel, it, the panel is listening and see, okay, if he sends binary uh, ASCII commands to me, then I'm just going to uh, change over to to uh, to ASCII mode. And that's what I just did. The list command is great because it's like saying, hey, tell me who you are. And it's going to report its model back, its serial number, its uh, software version number, its name. Uh, it's on the iBeam platform. That is a code name for, for Blue Pill here. Uh, and and so on. And now notice, that, I mean, all these uh, triggers that we were looking at in, in the slides, let's just uh, quickly go back to the slides. We were talking about them here. So right here, for instance, this is from my slides telling you that the T-bar is probably going to give you absolute positions like that. Notice that's exactly what's happening when I'm, I'm pulling this, uh, the fader on the panel then it's, it's, it's giving me those. If I'm using the joystick, then you see the same kind of thing. I'm using the joystick here on the side. You can't really see it. 
but okay, I'm just moving the joystick around. Notice that I'm getting two dimensions, 42 and 43. The axes are separate. If I'm turning it, I get 44. That is the hardware component number of that one. Could I have known that? Well, if you go in here, um, you can we, can, we can zoom in and you can see those small numbers, 42, 43, 44, uh, they are there. And you can also see what we call the event scope is actually revealing how my joystick operation was uh, was working as I was pulling the joystick around. I can press buttons and I get button presses. I can also see triggers coming over from turning the encoder knobs and, and so on. All right. Um, yeah. And by the way, if you want to put display content in, if you pick any of these, it has a display. You could type in a title line. Uh, so let's just do it a little better title. And you see that it's saying uh, it's saying title right there. And this is uh, text. And it will, as I'm leaving this field, it says text. You can also enable a solid header bar. And this is just giving you some of the options for working with display content. If you want to send an image, you can press that button. But before we do so, just notice that, um, again, the, the command to send that feedback over is aligned with what you saw in the slides. Now, this slide was about the uh, event triggers that we have now explored. But if you go down here and you look at feedback, then you see that these feedback commands that I just briefly mentioned and pointed out, and I think maybe this one is kind of what we are we are looking at right now. You you see that in the raw panel um, explorer application down here. That this is what I send over to the panel. This would be the JSON version of it, and this is basically the the binary version. So um, um, should we should we have a little bit of fun with this? Um, we could. Uh, and by the way, if you press that button, you get a an image sent over. But I'm just gonna copy this line. I'm just going to copy this line. Uh, so I just did that con control C. But now I'm sending over the image. So if you wanted to send over image, you can see that. Mm, okay, so either three lines up here or this JSON blob and then the binary we did not render but you get this image in the display. Okay, so if I go over, if I go over here into my terminal, um, we uh, what I could basically do is to paste this in and notice that I'm now pasting it and then I'm pressing enter and I get exactly that send over because that JSON line I threw into the ASCII based terminal I have here is sending over this text. Um, I don't know if we could try to do it again and then just quickly. Oof, I probably can't edit it. I can put this in and then see if I successfully can end this JSON. So I'm, I should get an exclamation mark now if I do that. Okay, so that's basically me playing a little bit with the uh, the terminal uh, ASCII based uh, connection to it. Uh, we have been using the raw panel uh, um, explorer here, and uh, then I also want to show you that since we we have a um, a tool to emulate any panel, because now right now I have this uh, Rack Fusion live on the. Uh, table next to me, but you may not be so lucky to have a Skyhoy panel just yet. So you can basically download from uh, yet another repo in uh, the Skyhoy GitHub place. This is raw panel dummies releases. Go there, go to releases, uh, or maybe uh, maybe just press latest here. That might take you straight to the downloads. And uh, I will then download this uh, release version. So it's going to take a few seconds. And um, it's a fairly huge file in this case, because it has a lot of content inside of it. It basically has all our, you know, profiles for all our 40 plus models, including the variations of those. So that is really a lot of stuff. Now, um, let's just go back here and um, open another terminal. I don't want to shut down raw panel explorer because that's super useful. But therefore, I open a new terminal and I go into downloads. I'll have to do the same ch mod plus x dance with the raw panel dummies like this. Let's see. Uh, we get this version 130. Um, that guy. Okay. Thank you. Let's try that one. And then uh, I'll just go back here, type in dot slash, open it up. It, it's probably going to complain just like we did a moment ago. And I will quickly go in here, go to security and privacy, allow anyway, go back here, and then open and actually it works, but it did not open anything yet, because we need to specify which panel that we want to uh, work with. Now, uh, we've just done a rack fusion live. So why not just type that in? See, I know this uh, because you could also have uh, used the list command and that will show you all the panels. You can see the Rack Fusion Live is this guy. So I'll just copy it and then panel and then paste it in right here. So it's now opening up emulation of this panel. Funny thing, 
you know, let's just break that out in its own tab. So I have this emulated uh, panel uh, right here, but you can see it looks exactly like the Fusion Live in real life. That's really awesome. Now let's go back here and then disconnect from the real physical Fusion Live. And now you can see that I have one here. I think this is the one and it is on this IP address and it has this uh, fake serial number. So if I connect to this one, notice what happens in my, it's just on the side here on my emulated panel. I'm connecting to my emulated panel over here. You see that in the background? Now I'm sending full throttle to it and it's got, sorry, gonna light up everything. I'm clearing it off. I'm, I'm picking this one. I'm turning on the button. I, I'm giving it a blue color. I'm giving it a red color, green color. I'm putting in display graphics and so on. So you have this fully you know, emulated panel over here. And you can do that with any Skyhoy controller. So I think that that is a really awesome fact, the uh, simulator. And we'll spend a lot of time with the simulator because this is what makes it so easy for you to get started with uh, raw panel integration using the simulator to emulate the panel that you are looking at. And then, of course, having the raw panel explorer as a way to help you. So now on the uh, left side, we have the panel, the emulated panel. And that is the server. So it creates a server on your laptop here or your computer. And then on the right side, on the raw panel explorer, you know, if we have left and right sides here, then on this right side, we have the client that is connecting to it. And that client, of course, could also be your terminal, like we're actually doing over here. Uh, yeah, why not just try that out? So uh, what was it anyway? Um, no, actually, let's just try the emulator so that you can see that we because we are connected to the emulator, right? So we can see that we can turn on all, everything. So how, how is the emulator actually working in terms of sending over triggers? Now, um, let's just arrange the windows slightly better here. So, okay, like this. Now, if I press a button, you'll see that we have the event scope that shows you the button presses graphically coming in. If I'm pulling the, uh, the, the T-bar, you see that I have also an event scope for the T-bar position. If I take the, the joystick here, then I'm actually getting what corresponds to, uh, to, to joystick positions by moving this little cursor around. You can see it more closely if I open up here. So it, it will create this, this 2D na navigational pad. Uh, if I take this part, that would correspond to the rotational dimension of the joystick, then I, um, I should probably click something else to just, uh, then you can see that I'm also able to manipulate that, etc. If I click here, then I get something like encoder pulses. I can also click and drag, and then I get an encoder pulses by moving the mouse forth and back. Uh, click in the middle to get uh, button presses from it and so on. So it's just going on and on and on with the emulator like that, exactly like if it was a real physical panel. Final thing that I want to show you is that we have a bunch of profiles for uh, panels which are either legacy Skyway panels or external panels such as the uh, the Stream Deck. So the, the funny thing is, yeah, you can emulate that. Mm, okay, but you can also connect it. So let's just try this one out. So I just have this uh, blue pill here and uh, I'm connecting my Stream Deck to it, and it means that um, the Stream Deck is now booting up here with a the application on the blue pill that is turning this one into a raw panel device. So the cool thing about it is, as I now disconnect here, you'll see that we just have this popping up. We are now in the raw panel explorer, right? Um, so uh, let's just see this full screen. Wow. Um, okay, so I can now connect to the Stream Deck. And uh, I can see it here. I can press buttons on the Stream Deck and you see that they are coming over. I can also go up here and run full throttle on this one, like telling it, hey, just light up everything, uh, clear everything. Uh, if I want to play with the displays, I can put in uh, stuff into the display. So we have broken the Stream Deck into some tiles here. Uh, I could also specify the background tile and that would just be one like big graphic across it. Uh, I'm able to simulate like swipes across here on, um, on the um, on the display, I can turn the encoder knobs. Obviously, I can press the encoder knobs. Everything, and even this can be emulated using the raw panel uh, dumbness emulator. But I think this video has become long enough already. It has uh, hopefully given you the overview of what raw panel is, how it works, how many products you can control with it, how the emulator is helping you to emulate any panel, and the raw panel explorer help you to discover the protocol and play with your raw panel devices.